Well, good morning, Hope, and welcome online to our worship today this week. It is a great privilege that you have joined with us online. Now, this wasn't exactly how we thought this week would go, but one of the great privileges of life is to be flexible. And we are a flexible community that are gathered together, we say, each week in different spaces and different places, but all gathered together because of the work of Jesus Christ, because of the good news of Jesus Christ. And we are gathered together today to worship God, but also to hear from Him, that He would speak to our hearts and He would change us, that we might live as His people, His disciples, His instruments of good news and reconciliation in our community this day. And so welcome here in worship today. We encourage you to, to make, take use and make advantage of the tools that are here online. Talk in church, use the chat, ask questions, ponder together as a community. If there's any way that we can serve you today, any prayer requests that you might have, please make use of our online connect card at galesburghope.org connect. It's a great way for you to let us know that you're here and any way that we can serve you. And as always, we want you to think about the church is, is more than simply a building. The church is the gathered people of God. In Acts, in Acts, it tells us that when the people of God gathered together, they gathered together to pray, to study the apostles' teaching, to share the Lord's Supper together. And you know what? You can do that together with a group of people. You can gather together in your home. You can gather in a coffee shop. Maybe you can watch this service together, pray together, encourage each other, share a meal together and gather as one community wherever you are at. Be open and listening to the possibility that God might be inviting you to gather a community together in your home, in your place of work, or in a coffee shop, or wherever, and to hear, to study the Word of Scripture, to pray, to encourage each other, to challenge each other, to share together. If there's any way we can help you do that, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. And we encourage you to use these videos that we create each week. These are a tool created that you can watch these services together and you can discuss and ponder. Maybe you don't agree with something that I say. You have questions that might come up. Use these services as that tool. Because again, we are one community gathered together because of Jesus Christ and praying that he would change us. So let's worship together this day. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, you are good and your love endures forever. And we are grateful for the tools and the instruments that you have given to us that we can gather here online today from wherever we are at, in the warmth and the safety of our homes, from in, in, in wherever the places that we may be, that we can gather together as one community. Lord, speak to our hearts. Change us this day and use us according to your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord this day from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, the mountains surge and quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations He has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Stay. 
As we pray together today, I want to encourage you to do something. Take a moment right now and look up and look around. Look to your right and to your left. What do you see? Who do you see? If you look out the windows, maybe the other around you, do you see your neighbors? Do you, do you see people maybe outside? Do you see cars on the street? Do you see houses next to you? Look around you here in the room. Are there anybody with you? Maybe you see your spouse, you see kids, or you see friends. Who is there with you? These are your neighbors. God says to us that the greatest commandment is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Today, as we pray together, we're going to pray for our neighbors, and we're going to pray God's blessing on these people, whether they are seated here with you, they're outside your window, whoever is there. Let us pray together this day. God, show us your mercy and grant us your salvation. Clothe your people with righteousness and let your people sing for joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. It is your sustaining power of your Holy Spirit that we plead for and we seek for today as your people. God, we, we, we confess to you our sin. We confess to you today as we, we gather here as your community uh, that we have often thought we think only of ourselves. We often tend to live our lives centered around ourselves and in our own pride. And we tend to see and to live this world through the lenses of our own life and through our own experience. And we're, we can be so easily closed off to seeing the experience of another, to hearing the cry of the poor, to seeing the cry of those who are in need, to seeing even just those who are around us, Lord. Lord, forgive us of our sin. Change us and transform us. Renew us again that we might know the joy of your salvation, that we might not only be simply set free from the guilt and the penalty of sin, but we might also be set free from the power of sin, that we might be set free from those voices in our head that challenge us and, and call us and draw us away from you. And our temptation, our proneness to wander, that we instead would follow you and live lives of holiness and righteousness by the power of your spirit. And so, Lord, today as your people, we pray for our neighbors. We pray for those that we saw, for those that are outside the window, for the cars that go by. We pray for those that are in the room with us. Some of us, we might be related to these people. Lord, have mercy upon them. Open their eyes to see and to experience you. May they know your reconciling work and the hope and the joy, the good news of you. Bless them, Lord, we pray. Bless them in their endeavors, in their lives, in their work, in their relationships, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon them that they might know you and your righteousness, that they would live lives of holiness, lives that would declare point to your good news. Lord, today we also, in our mind, we, we, we go beyond simply those that are around us to think of our wider community that you have placed us in. For those that lead and serve in our community, for those that serve in our health care, those that serve as first responders, Lord, strengthen and continue to encourage them. Give them hope this day. Hope, for you are the creator. You are the healer. You were the one that formed and knit our bodies, Lord. Lord, have mercy upon them and strengthen them, Lord. To those that lead in leadership on our community, to those in our council, our mayor, to those that lead our schools and our teachers in business, Lord, grant them wisdom. May they, they lead with, in wise ways in the choices that they make. May they lead with mercy and truth in your justice, Lord. Lord, bless them in their relationships, Lord. And Lord, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. 
have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon this world. Come again. Restore and set all things to right that we might worship you in all we say and do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I can't really say that I've got a bucket list. You know what a bucket list is? Many people have them. They are a list of things that they are hoping and wanting to do before they die. The experiences they want to have, places they want to go, people they want to see, different things. These are this they create the people create lists of these things and they guide the choices they make and they give kind of give clarity to their vacations and the extreme behavior some people want to jump make sure they jump out of an airplane some people want to go have a vacation down in australia or new zealand there are lots of different things on a bucket list i don't have one but there are some things that i want to do and one thing that i would really like to do and to experience sometime is the ferocity and the intensity of a winter storm in the north atlantic now I know that probably isn't on too many other people's list of things to experience, especially not today in the cold of winter. But it's something that I would like to see to feel. Maybe on be on the Irish coast when it when you see it. His, North Atlantic storms are legendary for their ferociousness, for their intensity of it, for their destructive force. To see the changes of the landscape that happen just after a single storm come raging through. It's something that I just would want to see, to feel, to experience. Now, I know I'm probably alone in that, but we already established last week I'm not entirely right in the head. We've kind of got that down already, but it is something that I want to think about. And it's that image of that intense storm, the intense storm of the sea and the ocean that comes into my mind when I read Psalm 29. And I can picture David now, he's in the Mediterranean, so the storms there are not going to be like North Atlantic storms. They're not going to be ice and ferocious storms, but they can still be intense. And I picture David at some point in his life, he's on the Mediterranean shore, and a storm is raging in. And he's, he's listening to the sound of the thunder, and he's seeing the crashes of lightning. He's, he's seeing trees being ripped up by the ferocity of the wind. Trees that have stood there for decades, for centuries, but now are forced to yield to these forces. And he's watching and, and feeling this, and experiencing the exhilaration of it, but also the terror of it. And that whole experience drives him to write what is really a call to worship. It drives him to experience, to see the wonder and the beauty of God. And he writes this out and he crafts this into a psalm. I don't know of any better way for us to experience what David experienced than to read that psalm together. And so today, we're going to read together Psalm 29. And we're going to do that in a responsive way. Now, I know that's a little different and kind of weird to do here in an online environment. But what we're going to do is I'm going to read Psalm 29. And you'll see on the screen words that are in white. And I'll read those words that are in white. Of course, you're welcome to read those as well. And then you'll see words in orange. And we're all going to say those words together that we see there in orange. And so wherever you're at, if you're by yourself or you're in a group of people, go ahead and, and together say these words together. Or if it's just kind of awkward because maybe you're sitting in Starbucks right now, you can kind of say those to yourself. But let's read together and experience this call to worship that David gives us in Psalm 29. Hear the word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. And now, ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the Lebanon, Lebanon leak like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the deserts of Kadesh. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. 
and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. One commentator pointed out that when David writes this psalm, the word that he uses for the word voice can also be translated thunder. And he's using this play on words of, of voice and thunder. He watches this storm and the beauty and the ferocity of the storm, and he hears the sound of the thunder, the reverberations of the thunder going across the water. And he sees it not just simply as the sound of thunder, but it is the voice of God that he sees, he feels, and that he experiences. David's words, these are, are, are fighting words that he says and he speaks about when he writes about the experience of this storm. See, for the people around him and, and the bulk of the population that's around David and the nations that are surround him, they worship their Canaanites and they worship the god Baal. And they believe that the, the, the voice of Baal is the thunder. So when they hear thunder, they believe that it is this, the angry voice of Baal. And they believe that his weapon and his tool is, are the lightning bolts. And so you see the weapons of Baal striking the ground, striking the waters. And they believe that Baal is in this constant battle and struggle with the sea and with rivers. And so when you, when you see and you experience the ferocity and the intensity of the storm, for most of the world and the people that are around David, what they see is they see the battle between Baal, Baal fighting and the thunder and the lightning and he's crashing it down and the gods of the seas and the rivers and there's this battle going on between these two and they're crashing together and humanity is stuck in hopelessness and abandonment in the middle of all of this going on. Stuck, stuck between the wills of the battles of these gods. But David sees what everybody else sees, but he doesn't see the battle between the gods. What he sees is the strength, the power, and the beauty of Yahweh. He sees the strength and the power of the God who created. Psalm 19, when David writes, he says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The stars proclaim the work of his hands. All of creation declares and points to the beauty and the wonder of God, even in the ferocious intensity of the storm. David calls to mind the voice that thunders and its vibrations across the water. It calls to mind the voice of creation. In Genesis chapter 1, the beginning of our Bible, the beginning of the story of creation, begins with these words. Listen to this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And David picks that up when he says, he talks about the voice of God being over the waters. He grabs this image of creation. And he sees in the, in the power and the wonder of thunder and lightning in this storm. He sees the power of creation over these mighty waters. And he sees the full strength of God. The voice of the Lord is powerful, it says. It's so powerful that it breaks the cedars, that all of creation is subject to the power of God. Later on, the next generation, we will see that, that David's son Solomon will build his, his, own, his own palace. He'll build a temple for God, and featured prominently in that construction will be, the ce will be cedar trees, the cedars of Lebanon will feature prominently. These cedar trees are strong, they are powerful, they're used to build our structures. But even they are subject to the power and the voice of God. They are broken under the strength of God. You know, you and I in our world, we build structures and systems. We build houses and fortresses and towers. And yet they are subject to God. And David is reminded as he watches these cedar trees being ripped and torn apart by the storm, that even those things that we create and all the things that we create as people, they are subject to the will and the power of God. He says, The voice of the Lord is so powerful that it even twists the mighty oak and strips the forest bare. We often, when we think of a, of a tree that is strong and powerful, we, we think of that, the oak tree. 
He says, even it is subject to God. Even today, our weapons of war are subject to the forces of creation. And we may think about a mighty and a powerful army, but even today with all the vastness of our technology, they are still subject to the forces of creation. I read recently of a story of a typhoon. It's called Halsey's Typhoon we speak about. And we hear about the, the mighty strength and the power of the United States Navy. And yet, it got, by mistake, it ended up getting caught in a typhoon. And, and several sink, ships were sunk. And the, 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 this incredibly powerful Navy was nearly destroyed by a typhoon storm. Today, even our armies, are, they're subject to force to sandstorms that can stop a tank. And creation and the winds and the raging and darkness. Even today, with all the strength and the technology that we have, they are still subject to the forces of creation. The armies and the war, those weapons we use for war and division are still subject to the strength and the power and the mighty strength of God. And David sees this and he knows everything is, this is subject to the power of God. The voice of the Lord twists. He says, and they, they sit and all of it, they cry glory. They cry glory. He says, God sits on, the, is, sits on the throne as king forever. In this climatic word, he says, he gives strength to his people. The strength, the voice of God that spoke creation and being. The voice of God that can shatter our structures. The voice of God that can crush any army. And the strength of God, that strength, he says, he gives to his people. And the Lord blesses his people with peace. Peace. Peace in the midst of a storm. The climatic element of David's leading us to worship is the peace of God. You know, many of us are very familiar with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down beside still waters. These are powerful words. They are words of peace. They are words that so many of us need. We need those quiet, still waters, that pastoral, that perfect scene that we are sheep and God is our shepherd and he is our protector and he is our guide. And Psalm 29 is a psalm that is very much like Psalm 23. And it speaks of the peace, the strength, the power of God. But unlike Psalm 23, where we experience the peace and the power of God in the quiet pastoral protective scene, in Psalm 29, David sees the peace and the strength of God in the midst of a raging storm. Many of our lives, there are times when we experience those calm and those peaceful moments, don't we? And we need in those moments to feel God. We may feel alone, we may be stuck in the peace. But you know, other times in our life, we are met in the midst of raging and ferocious storms. We see the trees being smashed around us, the mighty oaks, those things which stand forever, those pillars in our life, they're our foundation, our strength, and they're being ripped apart and torn away. We experience the storms and the struggles of life. But David says, even in the midst of these storms, we know the power of God. The Lord is powerful. The Lord is majestic. And he gives us peace in these storms. Psalm 46 that we began our worship service today. Listen to this, the first few. He says, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Now listen to verse 10. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted among the earth. David sees God in a storm. And he is still before God at the wonder. And he experiences the peace of God. Right now in your life, if you're experiencing a raging storm, and it feels like everything is being torn apart, and you're seeing the thunder and the crashes of lightning and terror is gripping you, know the voice of God hovers over the waters. The Lord is powerful and majestic. The Lord gives strength to his people. God sits enthroned forever and he gives you peace. Well, many, many years later, after Dave Woodard write these words, there would be another storm. And in this storm, there would be a boat. 
And on that boat would be a group of men. Men who were experienced fishermen. Men who knew the dangers of the sea, but also knew how to fight it. And yet they were out in this storm. And what are they experiencing? Waves crashing around them. And they become terrified and afraid, trying to somehow save the boat, but they realize their lives are in incredible danger. And in the back of the boat, do you know who's in the back of that boat? It is Jesus, and he's asleep. Peace in the midst of the storm. As the squall rages around them, Jesus sleeps. The voice of God. John said he is the Word, the Word that spoke all of creation into being. And he is at peace in the midst of this. Now when the disciples, they totally freak out and they, they wake up Jesus and say, don't you care, God? Have you ever felt like saying that to God? Sometimes when life kind of feels like it's completely disappearing and it seems like God is asleep and you just want to sing out, God, don't you care? Of course God cares. And Jesus gets up and he speaks to the storm and his voice goes out over the waters. And the raging storm that shatters the Lebanon, the raging storm that causes fear and terror and breaks, is calm. The voice of the Lord is powerful and majestic. It thunders over the waters. The voice of the Lord is like a flash of lightning. The Lord is enthroned as King forever. The Lord gives strength to His people. The Lord blesses His people with peace. Whatever you're going through in life today, whether you're going through a calm and peaceful scene, whether you're experiencing the darkness of death like we see in Psalm 23, or you are in the midst of a storm, know God is strong and God is powerful. And His voice gives you peace. May you know the peace, the love, and the hope of God today. As we go from this worship service today here online, again, go today as the people of God. Go today as people that live and demonstrate the peace, the hope of Jesus Christ. In the midst of the storms and the chaos of this world and life, be that strong symbol of peace. And know that God is with you. And so go today with feet that will follow Jesus wherever he will lead you whether that is across the street to your neighbor to the other side of the world, willingly follow him wherever he leads. Go with hands open to love, to serve, to touch, to give, as God would have you, for you are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Go with ears always open to hear the voice of God, and eyes that look, Eyes that see not as this world sees. Eyes that see not a battle between gods, but eyes that see the power, the strength, and the majesty of God in all of creation and see God at work. And go with a mouth that declares the hope, the peace, the good news of Jesus Christ to all that you meet in an every way and in every word that you say. Go this day as the people of God, empowered by the Spirit of God to the glory of God. Go. You are sent.